Uh, dudes, how's it going? This is Trent, and as you know, from time to time, I get new tablets and uh, devices for digital art uh, sent to me by either the manufacturers or by other companies. In this case, I received a package from GearBest, which is a website that sells a lot of digital art tablets, as you can see. But uh, this particular model that they sent me was the Vaic VK1560. This is a 15.6 inch digital tablet LCD display that allows you to draw on the screen at a very, very affordable price. Now I know that a lot of you guys are just getting started out or you're students and so saving a few bucks on a, on a good device could really benefit you. So I thought, yeah, sure, send it to me. I'll give it an evaluation. The only condition I said was it's gotta be an honest review. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I don't care if you buy one or not. I get nothing out of this. It's just a review. As an artist who's worked with a lot of Wacom tablets and Gaumon tablets and other devices, this is my honest assessment of the Veyek 1560. Let's do it. When the box arrives, it's no frills. You pretty much get your standard cardboard box. Let's take a look at the setup after you've got everything plugged in. So this is the setup uh, you're gonna be looking at. As you can see, this is a normal size MacBook Pro. So you can see that the screen is actually much more portable than a, um, than a Cintiq, of course, uh, because it's only, I believe, a 15 inch screen. It's got a little bit of glare on it. It's a little bit shinier um, than what you might expect, although it's, it is glass. You'll see here in the back, we've got three wires. There is the HDMI out and there is a USB. And then, of course, you've got your power out. I'm using a MacBook Pro uh, 2018 MacBook Pro, so I had to get these adapters for the USB adapter to a USB-C. It does not come with a USB to USB-C adapter, and it does not also come with a HDMI to USB-C adapter. So if you have a modern MacBook Pro, you're gonna need to buy new adapters. This is my Nintendo Switch adapter that I ghetto through together just to uh, get the thing plugged in. It looks weird, I know. If this becomes something that I use regularly, I'll just go ahead and invest in a HDMI to USB-C adapter. But taking a closer look at the device itself, uh, you can see that it's it's probably uh, larger than an iPad Pro, of course, uh, and it is got a pretty good stand. I mean, this is stable, it's solid, it's not gonna tilt on you or anything like that. It has rubber padding down here, so this gets good grip. But as you can see, the bottom here, this does not get particularly good grip and it might slide around on you. So you might have to get like a pad or something to set it on or get some rubber pads that you stick onto the bottom of the device itself. I do like the size of it. Uh, I'm looking forward to giving it a try because I found that sometimes Cintiqs are just way too big and bulky, even the, uh, the small tablet style ones. When you crack open the box, you're gonna get a few items here. You're gonna get a cool little handy pen case that comes with several different pen nibs. And uh, that, that pen case also closes. You're gonna also get a display port to HDMI converter cable. So before you buy this, make sure that you know whether or not your computer has HDMI out or if it has a display port out. Uh, so that you don't have to buy extra converters. And you're gonna also get one of those fancy no smudge two finger gloves to make you feel like a real pro. The device itself is only two pounds, which is pretty neat. And it features a good number of quick keys that you can program over here on the left side. And it even has a little wheel. This uh, centerpiece here is a wheel that you can click on the middle button of it to change its function, but you can use that to adjust your brush sizes or set it to zoom or a number of other features that you might wanna use a wheel for. Another nice feature that I absolutely love about this device is that it has a pen slot. So you, when you're done using it, you just pop it in there and you won't lose it. And God knows I need something like that in my life. And that of course leads me into the software and software installation. Before you can really do anything with this device, uh, you have to go to their website. It's veikk.com and download their, their latest drivers. The software installed cleanly, it was no problems there, but immediately when I started trying to change settings, I noticed some problems. I thought I'd adjust the pressure sensitivity using the, the uh, built-in software because I tend to kind of pr prefer it a little bit more firm. It's got a pretty wide range, but you have to press really hard to get that full opacity and that's just exhausting. So I thought, well, I'd just adjust this, you know, and make it a little bit more firm but when you look at the, the, the pen pressure test here, it's no different at all. Um, so I, I really ramped it up just to see like, what can I do? 
and it doesn't change it whatsoever whether I slide it that way or this way and uh, it's the same it, it just does it does nothing so I started just like making the weirdest possible arcs that I could imagine here and as you can see it has just no effect here on the uh, current pen pressure Later, through a bit of just fidgeting with it, I found that you can use the other nibs and some of the other nibs have a little bit more of a firm pressure sensitivity on them. So that's the only workaround that I could find. Let's check out other features. Let's, let's see if we can adjust the function key functions. I was a little worried, but these actually work pretty well. Uh, I had no problem uh, programming them to be whatever the heck I wanted them to be, any key, any button. And I have no idea what this is up here. There's a tab up here with the number 1600 in it and it does nothing. I have no idea. You can uh, change the dial so that you can set the dial on the quick keys to uh, adjust the uh, brush size or uh, the zoom or any other number of features. There is a tab here for the touch functions, but because this device doesn't have any touch capability, uh, I don't even know why they have that there. In short, the software, it does not inspire confidence. And I, I really hope that's something that they address and try to actually make software that functions a little bit more efficiently. As it stands, the only thing it seems to do is, is calibrate and uh, set quick keys. That's, that's all I can get out of it. But software ain't everything. It's all about the hardware. Maybe they can update that, patch it in, what have you. Let's check it out. Let's check out the hardware. Let's see what we can draw with this baby. So the first thing that I noticed when I fired it up here is that it's a very vibrant screen. I, I would say that it's a pretty high resolution screen as well. In fact, it looks like if we go into our settings here, looks like you can bump it up to 1600 by 900, which is pretty good. Uh, I mean, I'm not seeing a lot of pixels, even when I get in there really close. It doesn't look grainy. The screen quality looks pretty good as far as LCDs go. I was very impressed with the quality of the pixels. The, the display itself is very beautiful. It's vibrant. It's colorful. It doesn't look like some kind of discount display or something like that. It looks like a very high quality visual display. And it's pretty impressive that it's on this very, very lightweight kind of device, again, only two pounds. As I started moving around in Photoshop with this, I began to feel that it, the screen is pretty much the perfect size. I did notice that uh, I needed to put something down there because there's no plastic or uh, soft rubber at the bottom of your screen, uh, along the bottom here. So it tends to kind of slide a little bit on your table if you have an angled table. I imagine it's much better if that's flat. This is, of course, an adjustable stand, so it does allow you to uh, lay it a little bit more flat. There is rubber on the back of this part, though, so it does get a little bit of grip, but it really could have benefited from some rubber uh, or something to, to grip uh, here at the base here. I found that the device is just more comfortable with it resting on my lap, so I put it on my lap before I really took it for a test drive. The pressure sensitivity was definitely different than what I was used to. It improved dramatically, however, when I switched nibs to a more firm nib. After about 10 or 15 minutes of working with it, I started to feel a little bit more comfortable. I started to feel like this is a comparable device to other screens that I've drawn on in the past but not nearly as bulky as a full 21 inch Wacom Cintiq or something like that. This is actually really comfortable uh, if you're chilling and you're drawing on your lap. The size of it is just about perfect for that. But if you're looking at comparable Cintiqs or displays where you draw on the screen, you're looking at uh, most of those are gonna cost you around you know, somewhere between six and 600 and a thousand or even more if you get into the larger size screens. So for what this is, uh, you know, a, a 15.6 inch display that you can draw on the screen, it's pretty damn good. And, and I'd say that the, the weight makes it perfect for couch drawing, I would say is probably the most suitable place for something like this. Now, who is this tablet for? Who is this this display for? I would say that this is for people who are either freelancing and on a little bit of a budget or people who are college students or people who just don't have the, the bigger budget for a larger, more 
professional grade device. In terms of the range of pressure sensitivity, it's not all that dissimilar from a Huion. It's not all that dissimilar from what I've seen with the Gaoman line of tablets. It's pretty much right in line with that. So all of those still sort of fall just under the pro grade level of quality of plastic and quality of construction that I've seen. But at the price point that we're looking at here, that's to be expected. And I would say that if I were getting started with digital art or if I were on a bit of a budget, this would be a definitely a good buy if you feel that you need to draw on the screen, if that's something that's really important to you. I love the feature of being able to put your pen on the display, you never lose it. I love the size of this thing and I love the weight of it. The function keys actually work out really, really well. The spinner isn't loose or clunky. It feels tight and it clicks as you rotate it, which just feels really good as you're scaling your brush or scaling your canvas. The screen is vibrant and beautiful, and it's a, it's a good size widescreen shot, so it's great for painting environments or wider cinematic type of shots. If you're used to working with more expensive high-end displays and maybe that broke or it's worn out or you're just thinking you want something more compact and, and if you're thinking that this could possibly replace that because of its size or its uh, you know other features, I think that you're gonna be a little bit disappointed that you won't be able to adjust the pressure sensitivity in the software to get it to feel like your other device. Uh, this does not feel like a Wacom device. This does not feel like a Huion device. This feels like its own thing. And that takes some getting used to. However, if you've never drawn on a screen before, if you've never drawn on a tablet uh, before, this is probably a really great purchase for you because you don't have any other frame of reference and it's just going to feel good to draw on the screen. This is great for hobbyists. Uh, this is great for people who aren't making money from their art. Uh, this is great for people who are kind of just getting their feet wet. Or if you've got a kid that's like, hey, I really think I, I wanna draw on the screen or I wanna draw digitally, but I don't want the, the tablet where you can't see on the screen what you're drawing. This is, this is a good entry level uh, uh, display drawing tablet. But Vaic really needs to update their software and get that working properly so people can really thoroughly enjoy this device. Coming from working with really high-end devices on a regular basis, I was constantly reminded that I was working with something that was just a little bit on the more budget side with this one. Of course, I don't think you would know that if this was your first device. In fact, you can grow quite comfortable working with something like this throughout probably your entire art career and even get professional level quality results from it if you're used to it, if, if it's just the only thing you've known. It has all of the same type of programmable function keys. It has the same uh, levels of pressure sensitivity that comparable devices have. All the core components are there. It just feels a little bit like, like you're working on a budget display. So there you have it. That's my assessment of the VK1560 15.6 inch display. I believe that Gearbest right now is offering these at a bit of a discount. So you can go ahead and pick up a nice little extra maybe a backup display, or if it's your first tablet and you're thinking, well, geez, I'd really like something that I could draw on the screen and my shoddy little $50 tablet isn't doing it, uh, this would be a nice little upgrade from that. Uh, but it, it by no means will it be the top of the line. You have to recognize that and acknowledge that for the price point, it'll get the job done. It's like, a, it's like your Kia, it'll get you to work, but it ain't exactly a Maserati. I want to thank you for stopping by. Uh, if you don't know my channel, I do a lot of product reviews, but I mostly do a lot of drawing tips and tutorials in Sketchbook Pro and Photoshop. And uh, I do a lot of uh, my own illustrations and time lapse here on my channel as well. I also do a lot of more in-depth tutorials for both beginners and pros here on my channel. So if you like my content, please uh, consider subscribing. I'd love to see you around a little bit more often. And dudes, until next time, I'll catch y'all manyandaban. And ciao, baby. Oh, yeah.